looking up the side there. It sounded like somebody was calling for help, you know, so I pulled myself up to the window. It seems like they got somebody locked in there. All right, ma'am, we're going to need you to make a statement. I want you to wait back in the corner over there. Go back in your house, please, sir. Back in your Rodriguez, home. Rodriguez, cover the rear door. Martin on the fence. Owen and Dixon with us through the front. The truth, tonight I'm a politician, seeking your support in my re-election campaign, but tomorrow morning, I am a prosecutor, working to fulfill the promise I made to restore public confidence to the LA District Attorney's Office. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Hello. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Deputy District Attorney David McNorris, and I'd like to speak to the renewed sense of pride we all feel since Ben took office. There's this great old saying amongst lawyers, if you don't know the law, make damn sure you know the judge. <laughs> we lawyers are the best lawyer jokes because we know what we are. We don't trust us any more than you trust us. But that's what sets Ben Fisher apart. Look at him. He's He's the guy in the white hat. He's Elliot Ness. We had a case recently that dealt with this family of some means and the possibility that a member of that family had committed a capital crime. Do you remember what you said to me? Ben, standing together at that indoor swimming pool at that Holmby Hills estate? No? Well, I will never forget what you told me. He said, David, pursue this investigation wherever it leads without fear or favor. So, to all you rich folk here this evening, let that be a warning to you that no matter how deep your pockets, the Los Angeles District Attorney is not for sale. Well said. To you, Ben. Here, here. Uh, it's a black BMW. Okay. Thanks. You got a minute. I was pretty damn good in there. How much have you had to drink tonight? You know I don't drink at functions. No, I mean before you got here and then in the bathroom when you could sneak out. No, just a minute. What were you doing in there? I'm backing Fisher's play. <sighs> Is that what you like? You have a funny way of showing it. Well, I can't let him take my corruptibility for granted, now, can I? Right now, David, you need him a lot more than he needs you. No, I don't need him at all. I need you. What? No. I need you to give me a ride to my car because valet was full when I got here.
I gave you a ride now. Please get out. I think I'm too drunk to drive. Right. I'll call you a cab. Yeah. I'm not that drunk. You have no idea how unattractive you are when you're like this. Look, if you want me to stop drinking, it's pretty simple. Just come back to me. David, I can't give you the help you need. Right now, I'm just trying to save myself. Okay, okay, so I should be feeling sorry for you because you're the one who has the miserable life right now, huh? I think you better get out of the car. No, because you, you're the victim in this whole thing, aren't you? You know, you, get out of you know what I always forget to remember is that life revolves around that pretty little rich girl, doesn't it? Uh, Go right. to hell. Yeah, you know what, I'll see you there. to the barn. David, sorry for uh, for calling you last night at uh, two twenty-six in the morning. Uh, um, I don't exactly remember what I said, but I hope that it was an apology for my bad behavior in the car last night. So, hopefully, you can uh, give me a few hints as to what I may have done when I when I left you. Just give me a call when you have a chance. Okay. All right. Bye.
was Layla. Oh, Layla. Hi, I need a rental car. For today? Yeah. I'm Marilyn, you haven't gotten late in three years. You're telling me that even if she has a million bucks and a house in Malibu, you still wouldn't consider flipping the switch and trying it out with a lesbian? No. Well, what would it take? Well, can you say that <laughs> If you haven't gotten late in three years, why didn't you call me? Dave McNorris, Deputy DA. Go ahead. Hey, Peter, hey, yeah. Yeah, cancel everything for the rest of the day. No, no, everything. Ah, oh, shoot, that's at 4 o'clock, isn't it? Okay, not the hearing, just cancel everything else. Yeah, I'll be on my cell phone if you really need me. Okay, yeah. McNorris. Hey. Where's your Cadillac? Uh, it wouldn't start this morning. There's a rental. What's going on down here? Oh, uh, your publicity flax gave you a bum tip on this one. No lights, no camera, no action. So, uh, what happened? The homeless John Doe. Happened last night, but nobody found him till daybreak. Any witnesses? Well, we haven't started the cameras yet, Counselor, but uh, if you want to take the south side of the street, we can use all the manpower we can get. Yeah. Wait, you see what I see? No skid marks on either side of the impact. Driver never even slowed down. Probably DUI. Definitely. There's a media event for you. <laughs> Oof. Officer Turcotte? Thanks. I got pictures of the victim. Take it around to the shelters and soup kitchen, see if we can put a name to this guy. You know, it looks so good, McNorris. Maybe you should call in sick. Look, uh, who's the detective in charge on this one? Fearless. Yeah, okay. Just tell him I want to be kept in the loop on everything, all right? Absolutely. He's got an angle. I don't know what it is yet, but he's got one. Uh, well, maybe he cares. Oh, he cares all right, just not about the poor slob we scraped up off the pavement. Hey, 149, possible kidnap hostage victim in David Canyon. Hey, 149, Roger. Responding code 3. I uh, was walking up the side there, and it sounded like somebody was calling for help. So I pulled myself up to the window. It seems like they got somebody locked in there. How's he doing? He's dehydrated. I'm malnourished. Wait, uh, I, are you taking me to work? No, Mr. Dinger, we're taking you to the hospital. But I've got to get to work. Well, where do you work, sir? Uh, Raleigh Aerospace. Uh-huh. Tool and die cutter. Oh, OK. Well, I'm sure they won't mind if you're a few minutes late, sir. Teresa. The defense plant closed, like, 20 years ago. You should put a call into the DHD. Looks like uh, elder abuse, huh? Textbook case. Hey, what happened? Hang on, sir. What's going on? Do you live here? Where's my dad? We're taking him to the hospital. Is he all right, dad? Yeah, he'll be fine. He's just a little dehydrated. He'll be fine. Sir, is your father in your care? I got. Patrol one out of forty 
tonight. My partners in Push Pursuit, St. Andrews, 29th South, eastbound through the houses. Control 1849, suspect down. Request RA for a Caucasian male, 25 year old, unconscious and breathing. Roger that, A149. RA unit has been requested. What do we got? Knocked himself out cold. He tanked out. Yeah. <laughs> Take her, Smith. Hey, how's it going, counselor? Good. I was wondering if you made any headway in that John Doe hit and run case yet. Uh, no, but I'm going to the autopsy this afternoon, so I hope to get an ID from the guy's fingerprints. Mm -hmm. Any witnesses? In the area where this occurred? Shh, I wouldn't hold my breath. Mm. Look, uh, I told Tom to keep me in the loop if anything happens, so I'd appreciate any assistance from you. Yeah, but there's not much we can do without a suspect. Right. Right. Oh, great. Coat, tie. I'm sorry? Coat and tie. For court this afternoon. You here to talk about the affidavit? Of course. No, well, it's just a suppression hearing. I'll put you on the stand. I'll prove probable cause. The judge will rule on the admissibility of the evidence. Right. Suppression hearing. I know what it is. Great. See you in court. That's your boy. No, that's your boy. very important to me. You know, I need to know how you feel about children. I love kids. Bingo! <laughs> I think kids are very important. Kids, well, they're very important to me, anyway. <laughs> I think you're drunk. Mm? No, I'm not. Oh, wait a minute. Look at all these guys here. I get, I get to know how many of these guys propose to you every night. Look at this guy wagging oh, those things. all of them, all the time. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I bet they do. What's your name? Layla. Layla? Mm -hmm. Really? Really. I love that song. I, have to <laughs> I know, I'm serious. I think it's a good no, it's song. It is. I love that song. Oh, one second. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? David. David. Mm. What do you do, David? Mm. I am a lawyer. A lawyer? Mm -hmm. That's nice. No, it sucks. You're supposed to take pride in your work, right? You don't take pride in your job? Maybe I did it one time. I just, I don't know. I don't really like it anymore. Well, I don't know about you, but I work for my money. Wow. You're kind of tough, aren't you? Only the strong survive. You see, now a woman like you could keep me in line. You can count on it. Layla? Go to hell. No, 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 just, just wait. Look, get away from me before I start screaming. No, please, just, just give me one minute, please. Why, so you can try and explain last night? No, see, that's the problem. I don't really remember what happened. What, you're blackout drunk? I can really pick him. No, look, I don't remember coming to the club. I don't remember meeting you. I don't really remember anything. Then how do you know my name? 
I called your voicemail. I got your name. I came down here to the bar. I asked the bartender what happened. He said that we left last night, but that's all he'd give me. So, I've been waiting here. Waiting for what? Wasn't used to find out what happened. We met in the bar. We had a drink. You seemed like a nice guy. We went for a drive. <laughs> Where do we go to? No place. You got a phone call. Here, why don't you let me help you? Hold the wheel. Come on, I, I got it. Come on. Just... Hello? Thank you. Hello? Mary? How are we? What? She did what? No. no why, why, why would I tell her? I, I don't know. She's a reporter. She gets information on things. Could you just slow down? Slow down a little bit, no, please. Look, no, no, there's not a girl in the car, okay? I'm, just, I'm not talking to a girl, okay? Marion? Marion! Look, why don't you just right. pull over, okay? Okay, why don't you just pull please, over? Please, just, pull please over. just be quiet while I'm on the Wait, phone. Wait, look, you're gonna kill someone. Shut up! Just please shut the hell up while I'm on the phone! Stop yeah, the I know you're the car! That's it. That's it. Why, what happened? Nothing. You know why I let you buy me a drink? You're the only guy in there who was looking at my face. How pathetic is that? Hey, Fearless. Hey. Got some walkings on that hit and run. Thanks. All right. Oh, hey, listen. The old guy that you found, how's he doing? He said he's got some kind of dementia. Uh, Teresa said that he's so out of it that he probably didn't know he was tied up. Man, did you interview his son yet? No, no. Uh, they're going to bring him in from the hospital. Wow. All right. Hang in there, man. All right. All right. <coughs> McNorris. I was just seeing if you had a match for those John Doe prints yet. No, not yet. Mm. I was caught. Oh, son of a bitch. Maybe, maybe they're not finished yet. So. Where the hell were you, McNorris? Hmm? I called your office, I called your cell phone. Leave it on the floor. How was it hearing? Well, the judge said some unflattering things about you, and then he granted the defense motion. Well, he threw out the evidence? Yeah, he threw out the evidence. He threw out the whole case. We've been trying to make this case for six months, and thanks to you, our dealer just walked. <laughs> Glad you think it's funny. You okay, counselor? Um, Detective Stevens, do me a favor, will you? No. Come on. Hit me. Just punch me right in the face. You know it's been coming, so just do it now, please. Just hit me. Hmm? Come on. No, come on. You'd be doing us both a big favor. Come on, just hit me. You know I gotta come and just do it. Do me a favor. Do us both a favor. What should you have to drink today, counselor? Huh? We run a blood alcohol on you. What are we gonna find, huh? You wanna make a statement? Um, hey. Yes. Excuse me. You don't look so good, McNorris. Maybe you had to call in sick. Uh, who's the detective in charge in this case? Fearless. Just tell me I want to be kept in the loop on everything, okay? Okay, absolutely. He's got an angle. I don't know what it is, but he's got one. All right, all the witnesses for the hit and run, line up right here. You're gonna go down the hall this way. Follow this officer to the interview room. You can call your belongings with you. We'll line up right here, we'll get you some coffee. We're gonna go into the interview room one at a time. Take a brief statement, and then you'll be done. Excuse me. Is, is this for the hit and run? Yes, it is. You want to make a statement? Yes, I like to. All right, we'll just get in line there and see you at the end of the hall here. <laughs> All right, people. We're all going to go in one at a time. Okay, you will, but you won't. All right. Anyway, we hadn't been in the car two minutes when his phone rang, and it was a woman. I think he called her Mary Ann. It's probably his wife. Anyway, that's when he lost it. I mean, he just went crazy, started screaming at me and driving crazy, and I made him let me out right there. So what makes you think that your dream date turned into our hit-and-run driver? Well, he showed up where I work this afternoon really nervous, said he had a blackout that he doesn't remember anything about last night. But what he really wanted to know was what happened after we got in the car. Like, 
he knew he did something wrong. Give me a name, a business card, anything like that? He said his name was David and that he was a lawyer. Mid-30s, average build, had really close cropped white blonde hair. What I remember the most about him were his eyes. He had these really intense blue eyes. David. Yeah, I mean, who knows if that's his real name or if he's even a lawyer. And what did he say his wife's name was? Marianne, Marion. All right, well, uh, thank you for coming in, Miss French. It's very helpful. What's that today, today, counselor? We want a blood alcohol on you. What are we going to come up with? Huh? Well, Hello? Right hey. Testimony's testimony of a stripper, I don't think so. No, wait a minute. Don't characterize. Concentrate on the facts. And what are the facts? Young lady, did you actually see Mr. McNorris's car strike the victim? No, you did not. No more questions. No more questions. I made a mistake. Okay? I made a mistake. A man is dead. Yes, I know, but there was no malice. There was walking in the street himself. You know, in the middle of the street, there was no intent, Your Honor. There's walking. There's one victim already, and uh, John Doe, a homeless alcoholic. Do we need to destroy the life of two? So what I call justice. And what was he thinking? And you, you want to talk about law? What about law of the jungle? It was a mistake. Believe me, this man's death will not go in vain, Your Honor. The... the the lesson of this will not be lost on me. I'm going to go about my life in a whole new way. A whole new way. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, Mr. McNorris is not a criminal. No, he is not. He is a promising, no, he's an aggressive prosecutor with a promising future. Please don't take that promising future away from him. Because I swear to you that he will then dedicate himself to making this city a better place for all men and women. And isn't that worth the life of one homeless alcoholic? Homeless alcoholic. Homeless alcoholic. Believing a word I'm saying. Okay, you're running one of the truth. The truth is, the defendant is a lying, womanizing, cheating drunk. And yes, he's a murderer. He's a murderer who's about to wash away the evidence of his crime. Sorry, Pop. Just the man I was looking for. I need to take a look at your car, counselor. You drunk now? Not as much as I'd like to be. Well, you probably don't want to say anything. You got the right not to. But you ought to know that stripper you took for a little spin, Layla, she came into the station today. She heard about our John Doe. And she was outraged that anyone could commit an act like that and not take responsibility. And then what do I find when I come here? The great David McNorris, all ready to destroy evidence in order to save his own ass. But I guess the rules the rest of us have to live by, they don't apply to you guys, huh? You must really be enjoying this, huh? Why? Because I found out that you're no better than what you accused me of being? I already knew that. Get your clothes, I'm taking you down to the station. 
We'll use this one. You want to take a seat? You know how this works. I'll be right back with a detective. You want to pull yourself together, you look like crap. Have a seat, Mr. Dinger. This is Deputy D.A. McNorris. Um, does anyone want to explain to me what's going on here? Officers Heckler and Turcotte responded to a report of a possible kidnapped hostage victim. Arriving at the scene, it looked like what they really had was a case of elder abuse. Mr. Dinger's father has Alzheimer's disease. He can't afford full-time supervision, so he tied his father to the bed. It was the first time, and it was for his protection. What was I supposed to do? What does this have to do with me? The reason he tied him to the bed was because sometime late last night, his father got out and took Mr. Dinger's pickup truck for a ride. He thought he had to go to work. When the old man got back, the pickup truck had been in an accident. But it looked like it hit a fence or something like that. It's Officer Turcotte who put it all together. He figured out that old man Dinger used to work in the factory, right near where we found the hit and run. So he checked out the pickup truck, and he found fibers that matched the victim's shirt lodged in the headlight socket. Bottom line, Mr. Dinger's father killed our John Doe. He didn't know what he was doing. I mean, he thinks that Reagan is still president. We just figured we'd better find out how the DA's office wanted to handle this. You said you wanted to be kept in the loop. We don't trust us any more than you trust us. Let that be a warning to your rich people here this evening. The Los Angeles District Attorney is not for sale. The bed! Huh? Get out of the car. I always forget that everything revolves around the pretty little rich girl, doesn't it? Go to hell. Yeah, well, you know what? I'll see you there. David's not here. Yeah, I know. He's out on the road somewhere drunk. Then call the police. Please just... Who the hell are you to come to my house like this? I didn't come for myself. Of course you did. What could I possibly say to you? I feel like a fool standing here, but I just... David's destroying his life. If he keeps going the way he's going pretty soon, there aren't going to be any pieces left to pick up. He needs someone he loves and trusts to tell him, to get through to him somehow. He needs you. My only concern now is what I need, and what I need more than anything is for David Norris to be out of my life. No, I can't believe that. I can't, I can't believe after eight years of marriage, you, you suddenly stop caring? What do you know about caring and commitment? Have you ever built a life with someone? Have you ever had a moment in your life that wasn't about satisfying your needs and your wants, no matter what the cost? Excuse me. My marriage ended when I realized that David didn't care back. You went to his wife? That's incredibly stupid. No, really, Scott, don't try and make me feel better. 
How you feel and what you do about it isn't my responsibility. Any more than David's feelings and actions are your responsibility. So my job as a sponsor is to stand outside your craziness and remind you of that. That's great. That'll make a heck of a bumper sticker someday. I held a gun on a liquor store owner once. If he sold liquor to my son one more time, I was desperate. I was out of control. So I'm not just uniquely stupid and self-destructive. It's done. Let it go. When does it stop? When do you, uh, finally quit thinking? Maybe this time it'll be different. When that happens to me, I'll let you know. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. What are you doing here, David? Look, I had a really bad day. And I can't really remember what happened last night, and I was hoping maybe I said something to you when I called. <laughs> Take a seat. I didn't pick up. He spoke to my answering machine. You have one saved message. Andrea. Andrea, this is David. Pick up the phone. Stop pick the up the damn phone. Stop I know you're there listening. Stop the phone! Stop the phone! Oh. 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 Pick it up! At least you haven't lost your people's skills. Going to my wife? You went to her door? What the hell were you thinking? Was this, was this some kind of sick thrill for you? Huh? I mean, what do you think you're doing? Because if this is the game that you want to play, let me tell you, I'll... Oh, my God. Oh, I think I hit something. What did I... What did I hit? Oh, God. Oh. Oh, God. I hit the dog. Oh, God. I didn't have a call. I somebody's dog. I killed a stray dog. Yeah. I, I thought that I killed a man, this homeless guy. David, you don't have to do this alone. There are people that can help See, you. Now, now therein lies the problem, the, 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 you know, the lie. What lie? That somehow we're not alone, that, that we'll be somehow there for each other. And what's the truth, the truth, David? You want to know the truth is? The truth is that we were born alone and we're going to die alone. And sometimes there are these sweet little moments that, 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 that we have this illusion that we're connected. You just don't get it, do you? It's all right there in front of you and you can't even reach for it. Oh, really? All we have is each other, David. That connection. All the rest, the, 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 the careers, the homes, the cars, the money, that's the illusion. Can you really see me? unfolding chairs in some church basement singing kumbaya with a bunch of drunks? No. You're right. You're so much better off just uh, going on like this. There you go. You can collect those instead of 30-day chips. Don't mind me. You can see yourself out. wet, but can't complain. Yeah. Look, you mind if I some a moment here alone? Just... Sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I guess it's still John Doe, huh? It's a pretty popular name around here. Look, we haven't 
really meant. My name's David. That guy who, who killed you that night, he didn't mean anything by it. He was just this old guy who lost his mind. At least he had an excuse. See, uh, could have just as easily have been me that night. If you're wondering why I'm here, I thought someone ought to say a few words. You know? Maybe I thought that you could. I don't know if you had some wisdom to share. To be honest with you, I'm flat out of ideas lately. I can't help you. You gotta figure out for yourself. Because we're not gonna be done here for an hour, that's why. Damn. Are you done? Come on, guys.